This is question number eight. We're told K crosses a road of constant width seven meters in order to take a photograph of a marathon runner, John, approaching at three meters per second. Kate is 24 meters ahead of John when she starts to cross the road from a fixed point A. John passes her as she reaches the other side of the road at a variable point B as shown in figure two. Kate's speed is V meters per second and she moves in a straight line which makes an angle theta where theta is between zero and 150 degrees with the edge of the road as shown in figure two. You may assume that V is given by the formula V is equal to 21 over 24 sine theta plus seven cos theta where theta is between zero and 150 degrees. In part A, we're asked to express 24 sine theta plus seven cos theta in the form r cos of theta minus alpha, where r and alpha are constants, and where r is greater than zero, and alpha is between zero and 90 degrees, giving the value of alpha to two decimal places. So part A carries three marks. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got r cos of theta minus alpha. We can use the identity, and this is r cos theta cos alpha, and then we're going to have plus r sine theta sine alpha. So equating coefficients, we can see that r sine alpha is going to be equal to 24, and we can see that r cos alpha is going to be equal to 7. r is the square root of 24 squared plus 7 squared. You might uh, realize that this is a Pythagorean triple. If not, we can just work that out. Square root of 625, and that's going to give us r is going to be 25. We now need alpha. Alpha is given to be the inverse tan of 24 divided by seven. So if we work this out on a calculator and give it to two decimal places, we do the inverse tan of 24 divided by seven, and that's going to give me 73.74. So 73.74, and that is correct to two decimal places. So putting this back together, we got 25 cos of theta minus for 73.74 degrees, and that will give us now the three marks. If we just think about this, this is just two transformations of the cosine curve. All we've done is use this identity to write it in that form. Okay, it now says given that theta varies in part B for two marks, find the minimum value of V. So this is V. So all I'm going to write now is that V is going to be equal to 21 over 24 sine theta plus 7 cos theta, which we could now write as V is equal to 21 over now the function we've just created, which is 25 cos of theta minus 73.74. All we're looking to do is maximize this function, have the maximum value, which will make now V a minimum. So if we think about this now, and this is what I was just discussing now, this is a cosine curve with two different transformations. Let's just straighten this up. So our two transformations, we've got a scale factor stretch of 25 in the positive Y direction, and we've got now a translation of 73.74 degrees in the positive X direction. So what it's going to look like is something like this. And this is a very, very rough sketch. It's not brilliant, but it'll give us some idea. Now we're interested in theta between zero and 150 degrees. What we've got now is a maximum value here. And this maximum is 25. The minimum value is going to be over here outside and that's going to be minus 25. Now just consider that zero, one gave us the maximum before. All that's happened now is that this is moved. And this is moved across such that we have this point, which is going to be 73.74 comma 25. So we can see the first positive maximum is going to occur just here at 73 degrees, and that is going to have a value of 25. Therefore, all I'm going to write is V is going to be equal to 21 over 25, and that now will give us the minimum value. We wanted the maximum value of this cosine function to give V a minimum value. Um, if you want to give that, so what's 21 divided by 25, that's going to be now 0 0.84. So we can write that, or 0 0.84. Entirely up to you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the following. Moving on, we're looking now at, it says here, given that Kate's speed has a value found in part B, in part C, 
for three marks, we need to find the distance AB. Now, we're looking for this distance right here. What we've established is that this is the minimum value. This is where the minimum value occurs. Therefore, I can just use this angle. So all I'm going to do is simply have AB on here, and then we're going to have the 73.74. So this is AB, so AB. We've got this angle, which is going to be 73.74, and we're given this length right here. We know this is 7. So all we're looking for is the hypotenuse. So we want the hypotenuse, and we've got the opposite. So let's just go ahead and write this out. So remember alpha, if we do the inverse tan of uh, 24 divided by 7, this was alpha. So that's our 73.74. So all I'm going to write now is that AB, using basic trig ratios, is now 7 over the sine of 73.74, and that's going to give us the hypotenuse. Because we know that this is minimised, and we know that that occurs at 73.74 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. So 7 over the sine. Uh, let's do the sine of the answer, and that gives us now 175 over 24. So AB is equal to 175 over, now 175 over 24. And that's going to be meters. So that's an exact fraction. If you want to give it now as a decimal answer, we've got 7.29. So 7.29 meters, and that's given to three significant figures. So all I'm doing is considering now when we have a minimum value of V, that's where it occurs, and that is when the angle is 73.74. Okay, uh, moving on. Given instead that case speed is 1.68 metres per second in part D for six marks, we need to find the two possible values of the angle theta, given that theta is between 0 and 150. Right, let's set this up. Then. What we've got then is V, and we know that V is 1.68. 1.68 is going to be equal to 21, and I'm going to write this now over the 25 cos of theta minus for 73.74. Okay, let's just look at this. 1.68, if we write 1.68 as a fraction, that's 42 over 25. So we can write 42 over 25 is equal to 21 over 25. So 21 over 25 now, cos of theta minus 73.74 degrees. So we can divide both sides of this equation by 21 over 25. And just rewrite that. Let's just rewrite that. That's going to give me now that on here, if we just rearrange, we can actually write this now as cos of theta minus for 73.74 is going to be equal to one half. This is going to give me a special angle, and we can say that theta minus for 73.74 is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of one half. So that gives us now that theta minus 73.74 is equal to 60 degrees plus multiples of 360 degrees. We can also consider by symmetry, which we're going to need to do, given this is 73 degrees, 73.74 will be equal to now 360 minus 60, which is a 300, plus multiples of 360. I'd actually prefer just to draw the cosine curve and solve it from here, as this should be fairly straightforward, given that theta is between 0 and 150. So what we've got then, is the standard cosine curve looks something like this. We're going to come round, we'll come back up, and we'll have this here. So what we're looking at then is the following. We're interested in when this is going to be equal to a half. Now we can see that we're going to have one, the first positive solution here, is when we've got now theta is going to be equal to 60. We've got now theta is going to be equal to, on here, uh, or our principal values as such, theta is going to be here at 300. And then we can have this one right here. We're going to have theta is going to be equal to minus 60. This is just the standard cosine curve rather than I'm not relating it to the question as such. So what we could do is simply say now that the answer to what we're going to have, just take this to be the standard cosine curve rather than this right here that theta is going to be equal to 133.7. That would be considering now adding the 73 here. And then if we added 73 to this one, we can see that theta would be equal to 13.7. So they're both given now to one decimal place, um, and they're going to be your two solutions. So standard cos theta, y is equal to cos theta. Let's just put this here. 
y is equal to cos theta. Just consider where we've got one half. I'm solving for the principal value and then just saying that these are our two possible solutions. Anything else is going to be outside the interval. So that's part, uh, part D done for six marks. So overall, lots of information here, but in reality, we don't need most of it as we can just go ahead and solve. So there we go. That is question eight, which was the final question.